Hey everybody, it is late evening here, but I should have better quality as far as the video. I don't know what happened earlier. I had some technical difficulties. So I'm in my PJs, hanging out with you people, waiting on some peeps to show up, but I'm going to go ahead and get started because I don't want to leave the people watching the recording out because I know that it can get kind of tedious just sitting, staring at me as I wait on people. So today I'm going to share with you a technique using tarot for shadow work. It is my most used technique when it comes to using tarot for shadow work. It is the one I've taught the most when I've taught taught classes on intuitive tarot and strangely it's the one I've got the strongest emotional response from students from clients um, I had a strong emotional response when I first learned this technique so it's definitely one that um, I think is worth trying out if just for the fact that it it pisses people off, um, but once they kind of embrace it, they realize the benefits to it. So, first, I guess I'll explain that shadow work is the act of understanding, naming, um, facing your subconscious or unconscious or darker side of yourself we all have a shadow now some people there's kind of a two schools of thought regarding the shadow one school of thought says that the shadow is all the bad monstrous stuff about you it's the stuff you don't want people to see, the stuff you don't want people to, or you don't want to acknowledge in yourself at all. It's the stuff that, um, it's when you do or think or feel in a way that is um, commonly considered bad or even evil. Now the other school thought is the shadow is the subconscious or unconscious part of ourselves, while our conscious part of ourselves is the part that's in the light. Um, I say that they're both right um, because we tend to drive the parts of ourselves that we don't like. And now I want to clarify, parts of ourselves that we don't like or don't want to admit to or even look at ourselves, not necessarily bad. Um, one person in particular that I'm thinking of, she had um, some, like, borderline eating disorder, she had really bad um, self-esteem issues and body positivity issues and all that. So she pushed her, her views of her physical self into her shadow. And by doing that, um, she repre I mean, she just repressed a lot of herself and it turned into an eating disorder. Now, her when she dove into why she was pushing that uh, body positivity issues and uh, weight issues and all that was the reason why she had so many problems with it is because she thought she literally had the belief that if you are thin and pretty you are automatically not a nice person and so she wanted to be nice so she wasn't do dealing with that um, she was, you know, like I said, she was developing an eating disorder, she was developing weight issues because she wanted to be nice. Like, this is not something, I mean, obviously, there are many, many, many uh, people who are thin and pretty and very nice. So, how you look does not equate to how you react with other people, but this was a belief that she had developed. So obviously our shadow or our unconscious self isn't necessarily evil, it's just something that we have 
um, pushed into the darkness of our consciousness and don't want to acknowledge. Um, these can also be, I mean, these can be things that we adapt are adopted from early childhood. I mean, there's a lot of psychology behind this, um, and way more that I can go into in this live stream and keep it um, within a good time frame. So I am going to get into this technique using tarot decks. I shared today in a blog what tarot decks I'm using for um, shadow work at the time. At this time, I'm using the Rider Waite deck, which is the most used deck, and I'm using it because it's not distracting. I know the images. I've you know I've memorized the images and what they mean. I'm using Rider right Waite, and I'm also using the um, Alistair Crowley Toth deck. And the reason why I'm not just using this one is because it's my husband's. And say if I wanted to meditate on a card throughout the day, I wouldn't want to risk losing that card. So it'd be different if I lost my own card. I don't want to lose one of his. So um, otherwise, I would use this deck by itself because this deck kicks my ass. It is the most accurate. <laughs> most blunt, most in-your-face readings I've ever gotten from a deck as far as tarot decks is from this deck. Um, it doesn't let you pretend the reading is nicer or sugar-coated or anything like that. It, it just really doesn't. Um, I often don't even read for other people with this deck because uh, most first-time clients can't I, I just assume that they probably don't want something this blunt. Um, I usually won't break up this deck unless we're getting into some really deep uh, transformational stuff. But I love this deck for being in my face and not letting me deny the readings. So the technique that I'm sharing with y'all is something you can do with any tarot deck. You can even use it with oracle decks or Linerman decks. Um, in fact, the first time I ever used this technique was with an oracle deck. It was with the Brian Froud Fairy Oracle. And I just highly recommend it if you can get your hands on a deck and you want to do this kind of work. This is one of the easiest, as far as quickest, you can just go ahead and do it, uh, techniques. And it's to go through the deck and pick the card that appeals to you, the card that you like, the prettiest card in the deck. The one that if you had to put one of these cards in a poster on your wall, it would be this card. And for me, right now, none, these cards might change as you transition in life. Um, I pick different cards depending on where I'm at and how I'm feeling and what's going on with me at the time. Uh, right now, it's the High Priestess. Super glary. Uh, there we go. High Priestess. I, she's one I come back to a lot. Um, I just think she's gorgeous and it's just beautiful artwork. There's a lot going on in the picture and some of the pictures are a little too minimal for me, but I really like this one. And then go through the deck and pick out the one that makes you the most uncomfortable. The image that you do not like, you don't like the imagery, you don't like the character in it, you don't like the um, colors, uh, it bothers you, it might frighten you. It's one you do not want to come up for you in a reading. Uh, for me, it's the tower. The tower has really bad history with me. Um, it's the card that came up when I had my miscarriage. It's the card that's come up when I've had really difficult news to share with clients. It's it's not a card I like to come up. If, if I could remove this card from the deck <laughs> and know that it would not ever be needed, I would. Um, I have a really hard time with this card. Now, I want you to lay both of those cards out and look at them. And I'm going to tell you a truth that you might not like. Both of these cards represent you. They both are you. You are both of these cards. The one you really like is the face 
either it's either the face you show the world or it's what you aspire to be and it inspires you. Michelle says it's a tower for her too. Yeah, it's it's a hard card. Um, the only other card that comes up as often in with my clients is death because of a lot of misunderstanding around it. It really bothers them. Um, the card you don't like as far as part of you is your shadow self. This is the part that you do not want to acknowledge. Now, the, sh um, the tower is often a symbol of shock. It's um, you, You're not in control of your situation, of your life. It's a transformation in the most brutal and <laughs> difficult way. Um, and, it, it, you know, for me, it's there are things that are going to happen in my life that I cannot control. There are things that are going to happen in the lives of people that I love that I cannot. There's nothing I can do about it except write it out. And that's terrifying in a very primal, you know, going back to our earliest ancestors kind of way of, you know, life and death or... Um, just pain or anything like that. I mean, these are not emotions that we love to deal with, but when we're doing shadow work and we're integrating and uh, merging with that part of ourselves, we are accepting that and not like reveling in this pain or these difficulties, but by accepting that they happen, by accepting that they have happened and can happen, we can grow stronger um, in our lives and how we handle things with other people. You know, when we watch other people and we're getting annoyed because they're not accepting something going on in their life or um, wishing that they would move on from something because of how it's affecting us or that we can't control what's going on in their lives so we feel helpless. You know, this is once we integrate that shadow self, we have a better um, ability to have compassion for that, to handle how we react to it. Um, in our magic and manifestation, um, if you're doing uh, witchcraft or law of attraction, uh, when we do shadow work, it helps us to keep from fighting with ourselves. Um, I might want to try new things or really step out of the box, but the part of me that wants to keep control of everything, that, that part in my shadow, is blocking that manifestation. So by integrating that part of my shadow, I'm acknowledging it and overriding it. I thank you for your fear and keeping me safe, but I want this to happen. I want to do this. And if I was ignoring my shadow, I could be blocking major steps in transformation and manifestation. That's why shadow work is so important. Um, I really hope that you give this technique a try. <laughs> I really hope that it doesn't upset you as I've seen it upset. I've literally sat in tarot classes and told people to do this and had people like become angry with me. I've had confrontations after the class. How dare you say the hierophant is the um, is part of me, or you know, I mean, I, that was one of very specific situations. I was very angry, and I think that if it has that much of a reaction with you, it's definitely something to take into consideration. Even if you know, don't take my word as gospel, but if you have that much of an emotional reaction to something, you really want to step back and figure out why. Ask yourself why. Because just picture on a piece of cardboard, there is, I mean. This in and of itself is not going to hurt me. Even if you dig down and look at the symbols, they're nothing major, but my psyche says it is. So definitely something to journal about, consider. Thank you all for spending this time with me, and I will be back with you soon with another shadow working technique as I'm working through this area of magic and manifestation from last night's lunar eclipse to the upcoming solar eclipse because right now it's a really powerful time to be doing that. So again, thanks for joining me.